Alright, welcome all to Tangle Deep. This is a roguelike that I recently picked up uh, on the Humble Bundle. And I figured I'd just, you know, do a quick explore video to show it off for you guys. Um, for those who don't know, it's basically an SNES inspired era type of game. And I think it basically fixes a theme for protagonists for no, no matter what you do with it. So here we go. For untold generations, my people have lived deep within the Earth. Surrounded by brilliant subterranean forests, sparkling waters, and crystalline luminescence. We ha all have a special connection to this world, a bomb of nature we call the touch. Some are born with abundance of touch, which fills them with a sense of adventure, and urge to explore the wilds beyond our home. All with the touch inherent appearance of animals. And sometimes, when we fully experience the touch, we are drawn to Tangle Deep. An ever-changing labyrinth that leads upward to a world that no one has ever seen. I had never felt the touch, unlike many others in my home of Riverstone Camp. Yet, there is so much I want to learn about Tangle Deep. Today I have decided. I will go there and find my own answers. Begin. <clears throat> now when starting a new game you have a chance to go with a start a new game, a weekly challenge or a daily challenge, but it's going to do a regular new game at this point. And I'll look by the way there's a hard grow mode, a heroic mode, and an adventure mode. Um, basically going for hard grow mode, this will basically make it so like, you know, all changes of your adventure are basically ended completely, so it basically erases all the meta on a slot when you basically do this. Um, I think I'm going to go for heroic mode here, just so, you know, it actually keeps that stuff here. This is some stuff I want to get kept, even though it's all, um, also has this basically keeping bank goods and town progress as we go along. Uh, there's basically a bunch of characters you can basically play here, so you got like, you know, your spellcasters, your fees, and all that stuff. Uh, let's go with the easy character for now, let's go with a brigand. So, a dirty fighter that relies on supper choose, high mobility, and striking enemy weak spots for massive damage. She has, she has a bunch of passive bonuses there, and then she's got a bunch of job abilities over there on like, you know, the other place over there. So basically you got Smoke Cloud, Escape Artist, Cloak and Dagger, basically all this like, you know, um, hidden, hidden type of stuff basically, idea, type of ideas. Uh, I can select a random name like this, so let's go with Bailey here. And basically a bunch of features you basically pick up. These basically let you like, you know, get different benefits for like playing the game. So I'll go with like, you know, keen eyes to basically see like, you know, uh, so like MHP, what they're weak to. Maybe we'll get that, why not? And let's also get fast learners so you can basically see maybe some of the jobs get learned a little faster. Also note by the way, I'm playing with default steps, but if you want to basically change around some of the stuff in this game, you can change like, you know, how you heal after combat, uh, basically like you heal your health, or like your resources, basically to use abilities. Um, there's also like, you know, some neutral stuff over here. And then there's like, you know, there's also some, uh, negative stuff over here as well. But let's get to it already. Talk to Aaron about a town campfire to hear rumors and gain bonus rewards. And by the way, you can basically see some of the monsters here. Got like a brigand, some slimes, the salamander with fire breathing from it. The same people like me belong in the wilds. So what if I don't play by the rules? I know right from wrong. I'll go where I want. I always have. Today I'm going to be get rich. Now, note by the way, all the jobs basically have their different little like hues at the start. Um, the, the floral mancer is basically like the next easy type of job. She'll basically be like, um, I'm going to basically hear about the stories and find what they're all about over in Tangle, Tangle Deep. And stuff like that. Uh, it's basically an item drop here, that's interesting. A mint herb brew. And there's also this person here, so Aaron basically gives us some, like, you know, rumors to basically, uh, do on, like, our, our quest into Tangle Deep. Basically what this person does, Aaron, she basically gives you a bunch of random quests to do, so, tell me about a quest here, so, basically if I go discover Applewood Grove, I'll basically get a reward for it, so, I'll get a greedy glow, glow torch. Uh, I can talk to her again, and she'll be like... Uh, there's an unusual chicken dinner loving Molly Australian to your caverns. Uh, basically drop a uh, chicken dinner for it and I'll be happy. Okay. And let's see what else she tells me. Uh, she basically wants to defeat someone called Grim Salamander. So basically you have to kill a guy called Grim Salamander. Okay. Now if I want to try and get another one from her, but she basically says the mind's been quiet lately. Keep venturing growing stronger and maybe I'll, t I'll, sp I'll speak up more. Uh, no point is, like, the, of these other characters here, by the way, you got basically a healer. Uh, this guy will basically let you do, like, job changes and heal yourself and blessing stuff. There's a banker up there, he basically st stores your items. 
a weapon master if it's just a train. Consumables and like, you know, drill shop is just like a food and like items you can basically sell and buy. Let's just get to it already though. Time updates over here, basically. Um, if I want to talk to this person right here. So, Julia. Today's a big day, I'm so excited for you. Have you spoken to Aaron at the campfire yet? She will give you rumors that will help guide your journey into Tangle Deep. You'll even earn rewards for investigating them. I've heard some rumors myself. Things I couldn't quite believe. What rumors have you heard? Everyone knows about the monsters and ruffians hang out just ahead in the follies, but beyond that, everything is shrouded in mystery. People have brought back powerful ancient gear, and there are stories of ruined old cities, valleys made of fungus, and metal that lives. If even half that is true, well, you're in for some adventure, right? that's for sure. The great treasure of all is knowledge. What's up there? What's at the end? Is there even an end? There's so much we don't know, and about where we came from. Your heroes will help us all. I'll do my best. Alright, so basically, I'm going to get into this right now. Now, before I go in, I'll note that I'm basically using a WASD uh, you know, move setup for like moving around. But if I want to, I can use like, the numpad keys to move around. Uh, if I press like shift, I can move like you know diagonals and stuff, or apparently not. Pressing Q and E apparently lets me shift around my um, my weapon slots apparently. But I do like the weapon slots down here, is and then there's got like hotkeys for like your abilities down here. If I go to this quick by way, I can pick up some abilities right now for you guys to see. So uh, right at the start, I have like you know 250 JP. I can use it to like you know get um, some stuff for my bring here. So. Uh, there's escape artist basically bounce off an enemy's head to escape danger, stunning them in the process. So that basically stuns enemies. Uh, cloak and dagger. x move past an opponent switching places and bleeding them in the process. Firebomb. Toss of the hill blades at nearby enemies, dealing more damage to bleeding enemies and causing bleeding if they aren't already. And smoke cloud. Creates a, a cloud of smoke that will go, grows to fill an entire room. Decreasing visibility for enemies. Taking an enemy by surprise grants 50% chance of crit. I'll look like I want to actually try and get like more like you know JP to get like you know fam nice. I may want to do that right away, or you can like go for some of the other stuff as well. Uh, well down here, getting shadow stuff will let me basically move through the shadows because shadow bleed on enemies when you arrive. That's really really powerful, obviously, because that's like you know a burst ability that also like does damage. You know what? Let's actually save our abilities for now, and, and like you see like some of the advanced abilities, I guess. Now, if I want to play a couple of tutorial floors. That basically like, sort of like, you know, gives it just what's going on, but let's just say no. And we'll basically enter the Follies right away. So, the Follies. The safest areas of Tangle Deep are still dangerous. Many have tried to tame it, but nature wins in the end. Ordinary critters and unsavory characters call the Follies home. Alright, there's something going on with like, this curse over here, apparently. And I looked at this guy right here, by the way. Um, he's actually staying on mud, which shows he has a chance to root them. If they get root, they can't move these guys. That's basically why this guy's got this little symbol above him. And by the way, if you get too close to these guys, they may go hostile to you because that's what these guys like to do. Alright, so you've earned J JP points. You can use them to get new skills. We're going to try to save up our JP for, uh, you know, pre 50 if I can. Now this guy uh, drops uh, basically something called stamina power up. These are like power ups that you can like use like sort of like Diablo style, uh, Diablo Freed style, where you basically like, you can restore your resources down here. So I pick up stamina for that. For example, you pick up that. This is telling me a little bit about like water and lava and mud. Basically, these like have different effects on your characters. So, like water so you dodge rage attacks more easily, mud roots you, um, lava hurts you. See, I'm rooted right here. There's water plank over here, by the way, so... Okay, what's going on back here, I guess? Ah, okay, so over here we basically got the Grim Salamander. He's running around, basically, like, you know, the, you know, doing stuff to the terrain over here, I guess. We'll stay away from him for a moment while, basically, I, like, look around for our stuff. The kill. Basically, I'll get stronger and I'll come back for him. I want to try and like get a little bit closer to level up right here, I guess, if I can. So there's a chicken dinner loving moth, by the way. This guy's neutral. If I get him like a um, you know what he wants, basically, he'll like, give me stuff for, I guess. 
By the way, I picked up a short sword over here. I may want to use the short sword, I think, to do stuff with, perhaps. Maybe. Now, I know something about There's something called, like, you know, um, CT over here. Um, basically, in this game, CT is like your charge time, and we basically, like, get, like, you know, up to 100 charge time, you get a free move. Basically, CT is like your, like, you know, um, your basic speed in this game. And if you're, like, really, really fast in this game, you basically get more, like, CT, which means you basically get more extra moves. Um, you basically get that from Swiftness over here, which is basically, like, your dexterity stat. So, uh, raise up lots of Swiftness, basically get lots of stuff against like CT, you basically get, like, lots of moves in, in game. There's also stats for Strength, Spirit, Discipline, and Gill. Strength is basically your basic, like, you know, physical stat. Spirit is basically, like, your, like, you know, mana stat. Uh, Discipline is basically, like, your resist resistance stat. And then, like, you know, you got, like, Gill here, which is basically your, um, luck stat. And yeah, we'll basically ignore this guy for now, because I don't have, like, what he wants, I don't think. I think he wanted a chicken near this guy or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah, he wants chicken near. You can see, like, what he wants in his name right there. So, chicken dinner. We'll see if we can find out four men, we'll go from there. Now, I should probably note that these guys, basically, you see at the top what they're basically like, so... This guy's hostile to me because, like, you know, he's hostile. And I'll look by getting extra information because of uh, keen eyes here. So, basically, this guy here, I can see, like, his health is a resist 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 blah, resistance is because, basically, that's, like, you know... Um, very resistant to, um, very resistant to fire, vulnerable to water, that's, what, that's supposed to be in display right with that stuff there. You can also see, by the way, when they're going to do attacks like that, so I'm going to like, defend from it as well. Uh, this guy got curious, apparently. There is an, a knife. So I got Brian Shank and a knife over here. There is based on Gil. Extra damage on consecutive hits. We'll pick this up now, I guess. He stopped being curious to me, apparently, so that's nice. There's some gold. Now, no boy, that down here, you can basically see, like, you know, my experience. If I get up to 60 experience, I'll basically level up, and I'll actually get, like, a full, like, you know, health, like, you know, restart restoration thing, which is nice. Alright, so here's a farmer's court. I come from a family of farmers. Been growing things since my great grandfather's days. A buddy of mine, stingiest, stingiest merchant you ever saw, once told me that money don't grow on trees. Well, these five hands are, my, are my, of mine are meant for growing things, so I took them up on a challenge. I started playing every seed I could find. One day, I finally did it. I must have been the last bunch of old seeds, uh, odd seeds I found, but the saplings have real gemstones. I ain't a young frog anymore, though, so all I can do now is leave the fruits of my labor to my children. I hope they continue to grow one of things for years to come. Alright, so apparently there's like a, a seed that grows gemstones. That's interesting. Let's go up here, look around for stuff. Alright, you need to heal up, by the way. Uh, down here, basically, I got healing fossils. These basically heal up over time. I may want to use those eventually if I see them getting really, really hurt, but for now, we'll basically ignore it for now. And yeah, by the way, note that these guys, they basically, like, show you what they're basically like. So, this guy's curious now. He's basically just going to chase me. Be like, what are you all about? I want to chase you now. Now he's aggressive. Aggressive means that he'll basically get curious if I get too close to him, or... Hostile, apparently. Uh, this guy is apparently um, an um leparo. Le He's basically an enhanced jelly. That's not good. Okay, I'm getting really, really hurt here. So let's use this right now. And we'll move away a little bit. Yeah, these guys like to chase you, by the way, if you're not careful. Uh, apparently this guy got evasion enhanced, that's not good for me, but whatever. Let's take him on. There he goes. And 
And there is our friend the Grim Salamander over there. Let's try and kill this stuff before, you know, facing him. Now, by the way, note that the our orbs go away if you don't use them right away, so you have to watch out for that. Now, I figure guys may spawn if you're not careful, so you have to watch out for that. Basically, guys can respawn this game. And that's my level up. So, let's get ourselves a little bit of uh, Gil. Actually, I'm not really sure what this character uses for stats, but I think Gil's one of them for like, her daggers. Now I got full health again. And if I go to my like character, I might be able to see, like, you know... Yeah, I got the JP for my uh, ability now. Let's get Phantom Knives. So... There's Fan Knives. Basically, that's a special ability I can use now. This will basically send out Fan Knives to basically damage everything and cause bleeding. So let's do it. There's some damage to this guy. That'll make him very pissed off at me, but whatever. So this guy's got like 168 HP total. He'll take a few hits to go down. And he's bleeding. Alright, so we defeated the Grim Salamander. I got a simple sling of sparks and a pack of restorative items for it. Now, if I go to my character here, you can actually see, like, you know, I'm basically equipping this stuff as I go along. So I got myself a glow touch here, a spectacle, and I got, like, you know, um, this sling here I can basically put in my offhand if I want to, so. I can put that there if I want. That's replacing a knife. And let's actually get, uh... There we go. There's my, like, you know, thing equipped right there. And then we'll equip maybe a knife in the, uh, thing right there. I feel my offhand where I have, like, you know, be like my shield, for example. Because, you know, that's what the shield that like, goes into your offhand is like, you know, your shield hand. Picked it up, why not? Alright, we got this guy down here. He is a salamander. That's now very dead. I got myself some running shoes. So I go to my character here, you'll see that I basically just equipped some running shoes, or I didn't. Uh, I can put this in, into my accessory if I want to. So what do these do basically? This basically gives me um, some extra CT, so basically like move like you know more often. And a spectral is basically more guild swiftness. This basically gets me a fire and lightning damage dealt, so not bad. But I think this is better for me right now. You still want food, apparently. Uh, there's basically Grizzle Salamander over here, by the way. Split that with him. So this is like a nice cone, uh, cone effect, apparently. Well, he did crickle there. That means I got a whole lot of, like, you know, extra, like, you know, turn right here for my charge time. Well, this guy's curious and wants to follow me, apparently. I have to find a chicken dinner, though, so I can't really feed him yet. Uh, that guy's apparently, um, you know, getting rooted over and over again. Alright, you know what's good time to use right now? We use this to him all. Boom! That guy's curious. We're not going to hit him because I don't want to, you know, disrupt him yet. Now, if I want to, I can basically keep running around this level to basically, like, find guys to kill and get, like, you know, more experience. There's a Gunks. That guy's, like, a little bit more powerful fight. He's basically tricky.
There we go. Kill that guy. I got a simple sling from him. Now, I'll play if I like, click this stuff, I can basically, like, you know, equip my hands and then use it to fire stuff, so... I can basically fire at range if I want to. So that's like one way of like rangey stuff. Like in this game, like you have to pick up a range weapon and you can do, like, just click them like that. Uh, some monster over here. Kill him with this. There's an element on my body way called Weak Venom. That obviously cost me a little bit of like, you know, stamina drain each turn. Now, no boy, uh, apparently there's like, you know, different like, you know, steps to go to other places, so... I can go like to uh, the Seer Caverns over here. Or up there, like the other stuff. I think there's a quest for it, and I picked up a quest for this, but let's go here instead. So you found a side area. Side areas are marked with treasure chests in the upper left, next to the area name. Side areas can have extra uh, rewards, challenges, and characters to meet. Once you're down here, go back the way you came to return to the main dungeon path. So, you know, side areas is what this is all about. By the way, there's a, there's a nice little place to rest here, so... This area looks like a safe place to rest. You could probably cook something special over the fire as well. Um, basically, in this game, you can cook stuff you want to, so... Uh, you can cook simple greens here and get a powerful restore of a meal in return. You can eat this anytime. If you need to restore all your stats now, you should rest here instead. Either way, the fire will die out. So, basically, I want to cook stuff here and basically get, like, you know, uh, get my HP regenerated, my stamina full, or other stuff. Let's just say, um, hmm. Let's just cook our meat, I guess. So I can get my, my, you know, my meat stuff back. You spend the night cooking some delicious campfire roasted meat. I'm not sure that healed, healed me up at all, but, you know, whatever. Um, I guess we already got the loot in here because it basically has, like, you know, the open tre treasure chest at this point. How do I get back out of here? I just go up the steps, I guess. Alright, we're now on day two and we're staying on a stairway to see your on the second floor. Uh, there's an electric jelly over there. It doesn't look friendly at all. Uh, these guys don't look friendly at all, at all, for for sure. Let's them both like this. And there we go, we level up. Awesome. Let's get ourselves a little bit more kill. Down here, by we got the Graw Flyer, so we basically, you know, down there. Something over here. So, on frogs. Few have taken the time to preset the common fungal toad, and its relative, the bog frog. Their behavior is truly remarkable. Unlike many of their creatures of Tangled Deep, they show incredible com um, camaraderie, hur hurting themselves to aid of any barber who might be in danger. I'm eager to learn more, perhaps in the frog bog, I've observed. So, apparently, it's like, you know, enemies that will basically come to each other's aid if you attack them. Good to know. Uh, something's gonna attack me over here, apparently. Kill it, quickly. So those are obviously, like, you know, stationary bushes that, like, attack you if you get too close. There's a hand axe on the ground. There's a pelt pouch on the ground. I'll note that with some of the stuff here, by the way, I'm picking up. The pelt pouch I can use, like, you know, is, like, a accessory, so... If I put this in my slot, I basically get the ability to, like, you know, throw stones at people. That's what that's all about. And Hand Axe is basically just, like, you know, more damage, I guess. Let's put that right there, I guess. Alright, here's a Bup Loops Flarpsful. It's aggressive, and it's called an Avenger, so 
I think if it's an Avenger, it probably avenges other characters, or, you know, monsters. Perhaps. I could see that happening. Now, no point in this game that enemies have the ability to parry you, and if they parry you, you can basically, like, can basically like, get another attack on you, as a result. So it's very bad stuff parries you, basically. Okay, that guy saw me. Uh, I'll note probably that some of these enemies will basically have better, like, you know, view distances of you, so they have a hard chance of hit, uh, like, seeing you and such. Uh, apparently this guy got Turtle Shield. And he cured his, like, mild bleed, apparently, as, as they did that. That's interesting. You know, I wonder if I, got, I can get our abilities right now. Let's see. Uh, I can click in there if I want to. It's actually move past the opponent, switching places, and bleeding them in the process. Interesting. Uh, shadow Step, blah, blah. Cause Shadow Bleed on, on an enemy when you arrive. Sure, let's get this now. Now we'll shadow step this guy. Boom. Congratulations! You've unlocked a Rager Feet for a safe slot. Now look by the way, that's just basically stuff you can unlock in this game. I basically unlocked Rager here because I'm basically like so low health that like you know I kill this guy and basically like, you know I'm almost dead here. That's how you can unlock, unlock Rager. Alright, I picked up Citrin there. Now I figure at this point, let's just actually use the town portal and get out of here. Basically, it's something called Escape Portal that lets you, like, you know, go back to town. And, of course, it takes some time to basically get back here. <clears throat> hmm, what's going on? What's all that noise? Sounds like something's making a ruckus in Riverstone Grove. That's where the Monster Corral is. I better check it out. But before I do that, let's go up here. I'll basically go to, say, you. Tell me. Uh, basically, there's something called... Try pulverized moss jelly. Basically, he wants me to kill off three moss jellies and, um, you know, see your cavern so at floor one. Sure, why not? And you already have your hands full already. You would throw in your plate and then discuss in our course. So apparently, like, you only get so much before, like, you know, she just says no. Uh, heal me, please. So you can basically use, like, you know, gold or JP to basically get stuff. That works for me, though. And look down here is basically something called a monster crowd. Basically, you get like pets if you want to in this game, and that's where you, like you go for it. So Jesse, oh you there! One of my creatures escaped during bath time. I need him back in the corral. Let me a hand, would you? Attack the beast until it's fifty percent health or lower. Then grab the monster mount and use it um, from your inventory to knock out the critter and bring it over here. All right, let's see how this goes. So, I basically have to knock this guy down to 50% health or less. Alright, there he is. And then we'll go in here and we'll basically hit him with a mount. So, there we go. So, Jesse. Nice job, Red Lamp Frog, miss. Now that it's knocked out, you can drive over here to the corral and we'll, we'll get him nice and situated. No need to worry about Critter waking up here, the fog is proper and knockered, and we'll move on its own. Alright, so what do I do here? Just move? Just move. Now, up boy over here you can see, like, you know, your pets or allies and stuff. Basically, like, you see your HP and all this other stuff. So, basically I brought, you know, this guy. Eh, uh, Toady. Why not? Thank you, Kelly, miss. Now that he's back in a pen, totally looks happy as he can be. I say it's taking a liking to you. You've been exploring time with you, haven't you? I bet you could use a companion. I can take care of myself. Well, of course you can. But even Tyson Scrappers can benefit from watching Monster by the side. You can buddy up with a monster in the corral if you're happy enough. And they'll follow you wherever you go. Any healing effects you could use will heal up your pet, but they ain't invincible. I recommend using pet insurance in case things get hairy out there. Can we also get stronger? Sure, your pet's PC will gain experience when you do, and can even level up. Even a scrying monster can become a real st slugger with enough experience. Not that, now, there is another way to make your pet palace even stronger. You need a couple of captured monsters that feel nice and friendly towards each other. Find some rose petals, and, well, you might end up with a new critter that's even more powerful. I'll keep that in mind. So, yeah, facing it, like, you know, pet allies, like, you know, from right here. Uh, over here, basically, you got, like, you know, a target dummy. And this guy does, like, the tinkering stuff for you. 
And then here's like the toilet that so you like to basically, you know, plant stuff. Basically you can plant stuff here to like, you know, grow for later. I think I need to have like special seeds for it though, so... I don't think I actually have the seeds for me right now, so I'm not going to worry about this yet. Now, I think I'm going to like end this episode really like, soon, but before I do, I want to show you off like, you know, cooking and stuff, so... You collect some ingredients, why not try cooking with the campfire, blah blah. We'll basically do that and basically see if I can cook something for you guys. So yeah, basically you can cook ingredients, basically make stuff for yourself. Um, I don't actually have any rec uh, recipes actually to see but right now, so... If you go to like, you know, your um, thing right here, you can basically see like, you know, recipes you basically have for stuff. Now I know by the way, if you have like, you know, two meats, you can basically make a kebab, so... Let's see if I got that right now. Yes, I do right here. I'm basically going to got two legs like of turkey here. And... That's ready to cook. And there we go, meat kebabs. So yeah, basically if you know like the recipe, you can make, make them for yourself. So there's meat kebabs. Um, basically it restores a lot of HP. So real new recipe in your journal, meat kebabs. And there it is, meat kebabs. Now it's probably a guy to basically get them all. I know I like looked that up online and basically get, but it's probably a Steam guy too. And no time to make a dish for scratch. If you're next to a campfire, you can easily cook recipes, you already know. Just open up your journal's recipe tab and press keypad enter to instantly make that recipe. As long as you have the ingredients. You can interact with the campfire to create custom dishes and use your seasoning, blah blah. Alright, well anyway, you basically get the idea what this game's all about. Um, you know, it's a nice little throwback to like the uh, SNES area era, and why you got this, you know, question mark for yourself? It's because you got job abilities, I bet? Yeah, I can learn stuff of her if I want to. Oh, but anyways, at this point, I think you guys have, like, you know, seen enough of what this game's all about, and who knows, maybe I'll actually do a game uh, gameplay of this uh, further, but eh, I got enough on my plate right now. We'll play some other stuff before thinking about this one. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop a comment if you actually want to see this, like, you know, more in more depth, I guess. It looks pretty basic to me, though, for the most part, but whatever. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and take care.